Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa has met with the Vice President of the United States of America, Kamala Harris, at the White House, Washington, D.C. His Royal Highness highlighted the Kingdom's long standing strategic alliance with the United States, a relationship that continues to develop and strengthen with the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad emphasized the strength of Bahrain U.S. ties, exemplified by formal diplomatic relations for over 50 years and U.S. 5th Fleet's headquarters being based in Bahrain for over 75 years, making it the longest standing permanent U.S. military headquarters in the Middle East. His Royal Highness also reaffirmed the Kingdom's commitment to an international rule-based order to safeguard global security. His Royal Highness noted the importance of further strengthening bilateral cooperation and coordination for both the United States and the Kingdom of Bahrain to meet shared aspirations. His Royal Highness also noted the recent inauguration of the U.S. trade zone in the Kingdom of Bahrain, expanding Bahrain-U.S. relations and part of a package of new strategic projects designed to create further opportunities to spur economic growth and attract investment. His Royal Highness recognized the United States' prom prominent role in leading efforts to maintain regional and international peace, security and stability as principles of international development. For her part, Vice President Harris expressed her pleasure to meet with His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad and reaffirmed the strength of Bahrain-U.S. relations, adding that Bahrain is a major non-NATO ally. Vice President Harris confirmed that Bahrain is also a valuable strategic security partner that hosts the headquarters of the 5th Fleet and the Joint Naval Forces Command. Whilst also noting the strategic support provided by the Kingdom of Bahrain during last year's relief efforts and evacuations from Afghanistan. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, I am pleased to meet in person the Crown Prince and to welcome him to Washington. As he and I briefly spoke um, earlier, the Crown Prince and his family have a long-standing relationship with the United States and, and with visits to Washington, D.C. So it's my great honor, Your Highness, to, to welcome you today. As many know, for decades, the relationship between the United States and Bahrain has been a close and important one. For the United States, we have valued the relationship on many levels, including that Bahrain is a security partner with the United States and has been host to that end to the Fifth Fleet of the US and the U.S. Naval Central Command. Uh, Bahrain is also a major ally to the United States and in particular a, ma a major non-NATO ally. And we have appreciated the strength of that relationship including in the context of current events. You have met here many times, and this has been about always renewing and reaffirming the relationship between the United States and Bahrain. We are also, to that end, grateful for your support. You and I last spoke in September of last year yes, ma when I called to thank you, because when we were dealing with challenges in terms of making sure that in, when we departed Afghanistan, that refugees would be settled and taken care of. Bahrain was the first to respond to our request for assistance and support. And so we continue to thank you uh, and the people of your country for doing what you did, um, which was to act immediately and in a way that had direct impact on so many people. And today, then, we will continue the work that we have done together as our two nations. Um, work in partnership. Today we will have a discussion about many issues, including the tragic situation in Ukraine in terms of Russia's aggression. We will talk about the challenges posed by Iran and our collective and joint priority around making sure that they do not attain nuclear weapons. And um, we will talk about the opportunities presented by Bahrain's uh, leadership and expanding diplomatic and commercial ties with Israel, which we strongly support. Um, so I'm pleased also as the head of the Space Council to announce today that Bahrain has joined the Artemis Accord, uh, which is a very important partnership, international partnership, which will be about looking toward the future and the work that we have traditionally done together in the interest of security, but also mutual prosperity. 
but continuing that work in a way that also will be to establish international norms and rules as we go forward. So with that, Your Royal Highness, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Madam Vice President. That was a comprehensive introduction. Um, I am so pleased to be back in a town uh, that I still call home. And uh, to reaffirm, as you said, the relationship that exists between our two uh, countries. We have had uh, formal diplomatic relations for over 50 years, and we've had a relationship with the U.S. Navy for over 75. It is the longest standing permanent basing uh, of any U.S. service uh, in the Middle East. So we've had a relationship that is decades deep, generations deep. Uh, Many of my contemporaries have studied here in the U.S., uh, U.S. high schools, uh, not least of which even Dodia Department of Defense high schools. Uh, so we're very familiar uh, with the culture, and I think it has served us well uh, over the many, many years, uh, the years during the Cold War and then subsequently the War on Terror and uh, many of the challenges which we have faced together, we will continue to face together. And I think reaffirming our commitment to an international rules-based order uh, is something that is very dear to our hearts. Um, it has protected global security for nigh on 80 years uh, since the end of the uh, World War, and we seek no return uh, to survival of the fittest or chaos. Um, I've had very productive meetings with the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of State, and to top it off now, I have meetings with you, Madam Vice President, and I look forward to discussing all of the things that you did mention. So once again, it is a great privilege and a great honor to be here, and thank you very, very much for receiving me. Thank you. I look forward to our discussion. Thank you all. Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh has asserted that the Bahraini Jordanian relations have been characterized by effective partnership, positive cooperation, and remarkable successes across various fields, thanks to the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein of Jordan, praising the depth of the long standing bilateral ties. Al Saleh made these statements while meeting the President of the Jordanian Senate, Faisal Akif Al Fayez, on the sidelines of the 11th Congress of the Association of Senates, Shura, and Equivalent Councils of Africa and the Arab World, hosted by Morocco. The Shura chairman hailed the keenness of the leaderships and peoples of the two brotherly countries to strengthen areas of bilateral cooperation and coordination, as well as launch joint initiatives and programs that benefit the two kingdoms, confirming the strength of their fraternal ties. He highlighted Bahrain's Shura Council's ongoing aspirations to extend bridges of cooperation with the Jordanian parliament through the exchange of legislative expertise and experiences, valuing highly the advanced level reached by parliamentary coordination between the two countries, especially at Arab and international parliamentary gatherings. The Jordanian Senate president highlighted the prestigious status enjoyed by the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad at the Arab regional and international level levels, praising Bahrain's noble approach based on openness to all countries and advocacy of the values of coexistence, dialogue and rapprochement being the essential requisites for achieving progress and prosperity. He expressed pride in Bahrain's parliamentary citing its heavy, honorable and successful presence in the GCC and Arab countries. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani, headed the Bahraini delegation to the U.S. Bahrain Business Forum, organized by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce in Washington, D.C. The forum was held during the visit of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the United States. During the meeting, Al Zayani affirmed that the Bahrain U.S. long standing relations continue to create new opportunities for greater collaboration between the two nations. He highlighted that the recent establishment of a United States trade zone, USTZ, in Bahrain, providing ease of access to the kingdom and GCC markets, is a clear example. The minister also participated in a roundtable discussion entitled The U.S. Trade Zone in Bahrain, the Gateway to the Gulf. During the discussion, the minister identified the U.S. trade, one as an integral to achieving the goals of the Industrial Sector Strategy 2022-2026, part of the Economic Recovery Plan. The minister explained that the strategic location of the trade zone, close to the airport, airport the King Fahad Causeway and the Khalifa bin Salman seaport, will ensure the efficient entry and movement of goods. He stressed that the project will further strengthen the economic collaboration between the two nations, building on the existing free trade agreements between the kingdom and the U.S. The 
Minister affirmed that the project is the first of its kind in the GCC and adds to the Kingdom's ambitions to be a regional investment hub. During the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the United States, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani, held a meeting with the U.S. Deputy Secretary of Commerce, Don Graves, attended by senior officials from both sides. The Minister highlighted that both countries share a long history of collaboration, fostered through agreements, memoranda and mutual visits. The meeting announced that the U.S. has been granted official partner status in, the Bahrain, in Bahrain, Global Sea to Air Hub. The minister stated that the official partner status provides benefiting countries with a set of privileges. He stressed that the such cooperation reflects a shared interest in continuing to develop bi bilateral ties. Al Zayani also highlighted the recent establishment of the U.S. trade zone, USTZ, in Bahrain at Salman Industrial City as a testament of the strong economic relations between the two nations and one which plays an important role in achieving the objectives of the industrial sector strategy 2022-2026, part of the economic recovery plan. Both sides also discussed issues of common interest. On the sidelines of the visit of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the United States, Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism Zayed bin Rashid Al Zayani today held a meeting with U.S. Trade Representative and Chief Trade Lawyer Catherine Tai. Chief Executive Officer of Economic Development Board, EDB, Khalid Hmaidan, and a number of officials from the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism attended the meeting. The two sides discussed the latest economic developments of mutual interest, as well as ways to enhance trade cooperation between the two friendly countries, so as to continue increasing the volume of bilateral trade and create new fields of joint cooperation at all levels. Chairman of the Human Rights Committee at the Shura Council, Mr. Ahmed Mehdi Al Haddad, stressed that the Shura Councils and similar councils in the Arab world, Africa, Latin America, and the Caribbean hold a great responsibility in pushing forward the wheel of cooperation among the countries of the South and expanding its base. Al Haddad was speaking before the Parliamentary Dialogue Forum with Senates and Shura Councils in Latin America and the Caribbean which was held in the Moroccan capital, Rabat. Al-Haddad noted that the legislative authority in the Kingdom of Bahrain stresses the importance of strengthening the responsibilities that parliaments undertake to consolidate frameworks of cooperation between developing countries within the framework of bringing about the common and desired progress for all countries of the South to achieve sustainable economic growth and raise efficiency in the use of natural resources as well as human resource development. Al-Haddad added that Bahrain played an important and vital role in the negotiations for the preparation of sustainable development goals at all national, regional and international levels and in crystallizing the means for their implementation. Chairman of the Services Committee of the Shura Council, Dr. Jihad Abdullah Al Fadl, extended thanks to His Majesty King, the King Mohammed VI of Morocco, at the concluding session of the Parliamentary Dialogue Forum between the, the Senate's Shura and equivalent councils in Africa and the Arab world, and Latin America and the Caribbean in Rabat. The participants expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the Moroccan King for the care and good organization of the forum, wishing His Majesty abundant health and for Morocco further progress and prosperity. The participants recalled the royal message of His Majesty the King of Morocco to the meetings which was based on fruitful ideas aimed at strengthening the joint Arab-African parliamentary action in a way that contributes to realizing the aspirations of peoples for further progress and prosperity, especially in this period when the region is facing deep and structural transformations. The participants announced the launch of a new phase in the path of the 20 years of the forum to consolidate the joint Arab-African parliamentary cooperation and extend its bridges to Latin America's parliamentary activities. Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil bin Abdul Rahman Al Astoumi, stressed the need to strengthen partnership and mutual benefit between the Arab and the Africa region and the Caribbean and the Latin America region. This came during his speech at the opening of the Parliamentary Dialogue Forum with Senates in Latin America and the Caribbean, 
organized by the Association of Senates, Shura Councils and similar councils in Africa and the Arab world, currently held in the Kingdom of Morocco. During his speech, al Assumi pointed out the need to address the grave challenges that require developing and strengthening me mechanisms of Arab-African and Latin parliamentary cooperation at all levels. He also emphasized the initiative of the Arab Parliament, which he submitted to the Interparliamentary Union, regarding the establishment of a permanent coordination mechanism between the heads of regional parliaments in order to reach a common understanding on issues that need continuous dialogue. Speakers at the 4th Bahrain Conference on Diabetes and Endocrinology revealed that recent studies indicate significant developments in the future of drug treatment for diabetes patients, which will contribute significantly to reducing complications that may result in the long run. The participants emphasized that the pharmaceutical Pharmaceutical companies have recently produced many modern medicines for diabetes patients. Diabetes and endocrinology consultant Dr. Wiam Hussein stated that the conference dealt with the relationship of heart disease with diabetes as one of the complications that result from it, noting that the mechanism of choosing the appropriate drug to treat each case according to its diagnosis is gaining increasing interest. At the level of the endocrine diseases, the conference sessions focused on thyroid diseases such as hyper, hyperthyroidism and the effect that complications it has on the heart and bones and how to treat patients according to each case was discussed. The Bahrain Diabetes Conference was opened in its fourth edition under the patronage and presence of Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, amid active participation of specialized doctors, general practitioners, and medical staff from the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Gulf Cooperation Council, and a number of European countries. The closing day of the conference witnessed the distribution of prizes for the best papers presented in the spirit of encouraging scientific research and innovation. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,231,246 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,212,633 had taken the second and 965,893 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 23,082 with 4,700 recoveries, 2,041 registered new cases and two deaths. There are 31 active cases receiving treatment and 16 patients in critical condition. Bahrain has recorded 1,458 total deaths, while 499,114 have recovered from the virus. The ministry offered its deepest condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.